السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I am so sorry that I was very late uh, recording this, but you know it's Ramadan and I always say I'll do it after iftar and then after iftar I say I'll do it after suhoor and then after suhoor I'll say I say I'll do it during the day and then during the day I'll, I say I'll do it after iftar and the cycle keeps going and then I realize that your test is on Saturday so it's either now or never. Uh, I did it after iftar. Anyway, we already explained this in class, but I'm going to go over it very quickly. Um, we're going to discuss the sequential model of translation. The first thing you need to remember is that this does not happen um, in hours. It does not happen in the way we're going to be doing it now. It happens mentally, which means it only happens in your head as a translator or interpreter, but it does not happen the same way we do it or we're going to do it now. Now, when we talk about any text whatsoever, we can consider this as a text. Uh, look here, for example, from here. When we say there has been much theoretical discussion in the literature on the definition and size of such translation units. Now, this is a sentence, okay? This sentence is divided into translation units. And from this sentence, if you read it carefully, you see that the definition and size of a translation unit is not specified. We can't say that for all texts, one word is a translation unit. We also can say two words are a translation unit. It depends, okay? It depends on what? It depends on the sentence. It depends on whether the word is a term or just a word, uh, whether it's part of a noun phrase or not, if it's part of a verb phrase or not. Um, it depends whether it's a collocation, because if it's a collocation, the entire collocation is a translation unit. So the translation unit can be a word, can be a phrase, and you will realize that at the end of translating the text, the entire text is a translation unit. Now, in the, the exam, I will divide the units for you. So this step will be done for you, okay? I will divide each translation unit and it will be easy for you to analyze and work on. Okay, so let's look at the model. As you can see here, this is the translation unit you're going to test the translation unit you're going to test. Let's imagine that I give you a sentence. The Gaza Strip is free. Now, the Gaza Strip is a translation unit. Tamam? So let's test it. Let's see. While translating, what should the Gaza Strip be translated into in Arabic or translated to in Arabic. The Gaza Strip. I'm going to hypothesize a meaning in the target language. Say, Qita Gaza. Fine. Qita Gaza is my meaning hypothesis. Is it plausible? Does it make sense in the source text? Does it match? The idea that's being presented in the source text? Yes. Gaza, Gaza, Strip, Qatar, Ta Gaza. Fine. So far, so good. Let's see. I decide based on my linguistic and extra linguistic knowledge, based on my uh, consultations. I consulted the dictionary, I consulted an expert, and everyone agreed that the Gaza Strip means let's see in the target language do we do people who speak the target language say yes they do 
Uh -huh. So it's acceptable, it's faithful. Bravo. I'm going to move to the next translation unit. The next translation unit is, is free. Now, I'm going to hypothesize a meaning. Is free means hur. Plausible, makes sense. Yes, hur, free, makes sense. بلاش حر خلينا نبدا في حاجه ثانيه أب... يعني خلينا نجرب is free مجاني تمام free means مجاني right okay so i hypothesize that free here means مجاني is it plausible does it make sense uh no or yes it makes sense free مجاني in the dictionary it means مجاني if i consult people the word free on its own makes sense تمام is it acceptable or faithful in the target language as a unit? Yes. Now, if I look at the entire statement, Qita Gaza Majani. No, wait, doesn't make sense. Doesn't fit the language. It doesn't fit the structure. It doesn't fit the meaning. It doesn't make sense. So I go back and I make, I hypothesize a new meaning. Free here doesn't mean majani. Free here means har or harra. I try with har first. I go through all of the steps. I see qita gaza har. Makes sense. Correct. Plausible. Faithful. Proud. If I test harra first, qita gaza harra, I'll notice that it doesn't make sense. So no, harra doesn't work, doesn't fit. So I go back and I make a new hypothesis or I hypothesize a new meaning. To sum up, and like I said, this is a mental process. We don't really do this while translating. But this is to show you how translation and interpretation works inside the mind of the translator and the interpreter. Whenever they go through a collocation, a term, a phrase, a sentence, they keep asking themselves two main questions. Does it make sense? If yes, is it acceptable in the target language? In the same structure, the same style, the same way of phrasing? If yes, then my translation or interpretation is correct. Now, what about, uh, what about say, interpretation? Can this work when it comes to interpretation? We say that no. With translation, as a translator, I have time to think, to edit, to go back to the text, to go back to the translation units. But when it comes to interpretation, it's impossible. If while someone is speaking, I ask them, stop, pause, I need to check to make sure that I provided you with the correct interpretation, the correct terminology, the correct word. Uh huh. I'm going to pose the entire conference, the entire meeting, and that's not just how it works. So with interpretation, the reason why this sequential model doesn't work is because we cannot edit and proofread our interpretation while interpreting. Because if we do so, it means we're going to miss the following uh, the translation unit, we're going to miss the, 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 what is going to be said afterwards, okay? Now, we understand the idea, but how do we provide you as a teacher with the perfect answer for a test? What I would do in a test is that I would give you the sentence like this, the Gaza Strip is free, for example, and I would be classifying it into units, okay, between square brackets. You're going to notice that it's going to be divided into three translation units. The first translation unit is the Gaza Strip. The second translation unit is, is free. The third translation unit is the entire sentence. You may ask, what do we consider the entire sentence a translation unit. Because after we are done with each unit on its own, we need to look at the entire sentence. 
you need to look at the entire paragraph. Does it make sense or not? And that is why we say we cannot specify or limit the length of a translation unit. Because once I am done with each translation unit, to see if the meaning hypothesis I made makes sense or not with relation to the source language and the target language, source culture and the target culture, then at the end, I'm going to see whether or not it fits as a translation for the entire text, the entire sentence, the entire context, not just these separate units. When I in translated is free as majani, it fits for the translation unit is free. Sah is free majani. But when I look at the entire translation unit, which is the sentence, the phrase, the paragraph, the article, I'm going to need to test my meaning hypothesis and see whether it fits the entire context or not. Now, how can I answer the question in the test? Like I said, you're going to find that it will be divided into units. The first translation unit is the Gaza Strip. You write it down and you draw this model on the paper, but instead of writing the words meaning hypothesis, you actually write the hypothesis. Yeah. Instead of writing translation unit, you write the Gaza Strip. So here you write the Gaza Strip. And then the meaning hypothesis, which will be in the square here, is going to be Qita Gaza. And then you will ask yourself, is it plausible? Yes. The target language reformul reformulation is Qita Gaza. See this no here? This no, you're not going to need it because you said yes. So this no is not going to work for us. You don't add this. You don't draw this part. You just draw plausible, yes, Qita Gaza, instead of target language reformulation. Acceptable, faithful, yes. Acceptable, faithful, yes. And then you move to the next translation unit and you write is free. Okay. Now, what you did here, you're going to explain it here. You say, first, we make a meaning hypothesis for the translation unit. Here, the meaning Hypothesis is the Gaza. After testing it, find that it is plausible and acceptable. It makes sense in the source language and it is faithful to the target. And then instead of drawing the model again for the next translation unit, which is number two, is three, you just say we repeat the same uh, we repeat the same process in, with, without repeating it in in, in in drawing, so you don't draw, you just say we repeat the same process. Uh, you say, you may here, you may uh, provide first incorrect translation in order to apply both correct and incorrect meanings, meaning hypotheses, or you could just use the correct translation immediately. So we repeat the same process. Um, you say, uh, the meaning hypothesis here, the meaning hypothesis here is that is um, uh, after testing it, we find that it is plausible 
and septum. Makes sense in the source language and it is faithful to the target language. Of course, I don't want you to memorize what's written here. Please don't memorize this because you're fourth year students. Um, I want you to understand how it's done, but I want you to do it using your own words. And it would please me if you could provide incorrect hypothesis, wrong meaning hypothesis, and then you correct it. It would please me, it would make me really happy because it would show that you understood the model, okay? If you still have any questions, you may leave it in a comment or you, you may ask me on Facebook. Good luck on the test. Balash, good luck. Allah wafiqkum yom sabt. Wa zayim hadith lakum al-imtihan, insha'Allah, hikun, latif, khafif, tarif. Wa ramadan kareem.